everyone t bones here again with another video and it is a video it is like 25 minutes long of me talking and you watching me draw and it's gonna be great i even have a script this time so not any useless rambling like usual i guess i'm gonna go over my process the first one is going to be thumbnailing on the left you have a sped up version of me doing thumbnails and on the right you have me in real time doing thumbnails I find that oftentimes time lapses and speed paints give an unrealistic expectation to young artists on how quickly someone draws. So I'm just putting that in there for your guys' sake. Do note that this painting did take me, I want to say about 12 hours total, and it's been condensed down into 24 minutes. Okay, so just so you have a basic idea. But I wanted to show you the thumbnailing process. This is important. This is what gets the ideas out. This is what gets the story out. It lets me kind of just mess around. I knew I wanted a bell knight. I knew I wanted a dragon, but I didn't know where I wanted to go from there. Were they going to be friends? Were they going to be enemies? Were they working together? Were they working against each other? What about the dragon? What, what's so special about the dragon and the bell knight? What's its story? I wanted to just kind of work that out. Am I going to have a lizard dragon? Am I going to have a snake-like dragon? Am I going to have a completely different kind of dragon? I really wanted to make sure I got that settled and then what I did is I usually choose about two or three of my favorite thumbnails and I'll go ahead and flesh them out so this is one of them that I'm fleshing out this is when the idea was more of a snake like dragon the bell knight was going to be running along the body kind of like that cool ninja samurai you always see happening right the long dragon serpentine body and our hero is running down its form as the head comes to strike and they raise the sword and it's just it's epic right so that was the idea for this thumbnail and I might revisit it. I don't know. Maybe. It depends on my mood. But I did choose, I want to say two thumbnails on this one. Uh, the top one you can't see right now is the one I ended up going with design-wise. And um, this one I kind of put off for the end. But on this thumbnail, I'm letting myself get into a bit more detail, work out a bit more where... Um, anatomy, scales, positioning, composition, all that's going to be. This is when I start looking up references, too, to get an idea of how the body's going to work, because you should always use references. They're very helpful. Don't let like, people think that they're not. The only thing I didn't use a reference for here is the Bell Knight body. I still didn't know what pose I wanted them in, so I was just kind of messing around. The great thing about Bell Knights is they're kind of stick figures on their own with the way their bodies are made up, so I don't have to worry too much about anatomy. And then what I do is I transfer it over to Procreate. This is where I take the thumbnails and I go into the digital grayscale phase. I took one of my um, favorite thumbnails and I'm transferring it into Procreate. As you can see, I'm setting up where my values are. You know, what do I want up front? What do I want pushed back? What kind of, like, where do I want the light source to be coming from, the glow? I'm doing it for both thumbnails that I ended up choosing because that's really what seals the deal for me is whichever one I can come up with a better color composition. I choose the one I like the most, which was the first one, and then I'm going to really kind of go hard on the grayscale part. I'm working on a different composition, as you can see. Like, I liked the idea, but I didn't like the pose, and so I'm switching it up. And I'm having him, like, wrap around a tree, and there's a force in the background, and our bell knight's bravely standing, or maybe he's knocked over because, you know, he's been a long battle and he's tired. But that's what I was going for. I use a lot of texture in this phase because it translates really well into painting. It helps get some shapes in there that you wouldn't otherwise use. So don't be scared of super textured brushes. They're a lot of fun. Then I switch it over to Clip Studio. Um, Clip Studio is now my main art program. I did use to use Photoshop a lot, but I didn't like their predatory practices. I don't like the whole subscription-based thing. And honestly, I feel like Clip Studio is made for painting. It's made for artists. It really is. And so I liked it more. And um, I bought it when it was on sale. You can always wait for it to go on sale. It's usually like 50% off when it goes on sale. It's amazing. It has a lot of resources and everything. So that's um, that's always a good choice. But here I am. I'm kind of working out my um, values some more. I try to separate the foreground, midground, and background in this part so I can kind of focus on them, like get the background really sorted without worrying about painting over the foreground and the midground. I do this sometimes for complex pieces. This is um, a piece with a background. I usually don't do those. I am the queen of characters floating in empty space. So this was new to me. I'm trying to push myself to do things out of my comfort zone. So I'm still kind of experimenting with how I want to get things done. But I am not a clean painter whatsoever, so I do often have to mask out important areas that I don't want to touch. Otherwise, I will just paint over them and I'll lose everything that I did. Sorry, drinking some soda. <sighs> I'm talking without breathing. That's always a bad sign. 
it's just so much to talk about in so little time, you know? Like, how do I explain, like, a decade plus of experience into a little 25-minute video? Like, there's really not much to do. If I had 25 minutes for, like, each section, maybe. But no one's going to sit through 25 minutes of grayscales. I don't even sit through 25 minutes of grayscales, which is actually a problem that we're going to be going over later in the video. We're going to talk about, like, by not focusing on certain aspects, you kind of shoot yourself in the foot hardcore. But I've separated the background, mid-ground, and foreground into the three separate pieces to render out what I want them to look like without worrying about affecting the other one. Now, this might be considered a waste of time because the foreground and mid-ground will be blocking a lot of the background elements, but it helps me with my flow. It helps me get a feel for the area that the characters are in so I can place them better. Um, I think it's around the six minute mark now, so I'm getting into rendering. And that's when I take my grayscale and I really start picking out pieces and refining them. The problem I did here is I did not refine enough. Like I only refined parts of the face before I went into color. And what I should have done is really just refined almost the entire entire piece. I really get those details banged out. Don't just leave things to be blobs. Like the bell knight. Oh my gosh, sorry. The bell knight. I didn't touch it all, and that's a big no-no. I should have, because that's one of the main focuses of the painting. I really should have touched on him before I got into color at all, but I'm very antsy. I like to get straight into color. I don't like staying on grayscale for too long, because it's boring. I'm like a, a squirrel. I need my entertainment, like, every five seconds. I get bored real easy. I'll jump from things to things. But it really did kind of screw me over, but at the same time, I'm kind of glad it happened, because as I'm painting this, I hated it. I really did like it wasn't working for me it wasn't it wasn't where I wanted it to be like it felt awkward I couldn't get the body of the dragon to work out I couldn't get a pose for the bell knight that felt good I felt like the background was getting in the way more than it was helping the face wasn't working for me I mean just everything about this piece dragged on and if I'm not having fun painting something it's like why should I paint it like I'm not having fun. You're not going to have fun looking at it. If I'm not having fun, it's because something's wrong with it. And I kept going at it. I kept really tackling it, trying to make it work. I was really trying to make it work, um, even though it wasn't. And just because you invest a lot of time in this night doesn't mean you have to stick with it. And that goes for a lot of things, but in this case, I'm talking about painting. So I finally came to the conclusion it needed to be redone. It wasn't going to work. I just had to scrap it. So I took a day off, and I came back to it, and I redid the entire composition. I still kept the idea of the iguana look. I looked up references of iguanas and other creatures to kind of inspire this piece. I'm not going to lie, you know that, that picture of the dog, and it's born with a shortened vertebrae, and so it doesn't have a neck. It's just like a head and shoulders. And it's, it's sad, because, you know, it's shortened, but it's just a happy puppy. And I was watching Dodo videos, because I do that in my free time, because I like to feel good about things, and those make me feel good. And I saw that dog, and I was like, oh my god, I love it. I love that so much. I need to put that into the painting. And so the dragon I came up with was inspired by that heavily. I liked the, the, all the masses up towards the neck and the head, but then you had the tiny little back body. And I thought it had like a playfulness to it. It was kind of fun. And I started getting this story in my head about how, you know, this dragon was more of a puppy, and it didn't realize the damage it was doing, and it was just excited, and it's not its fault, it's life that catches things on fire. You know, it's just that, see how it just develops, and so I redid the whole thing, loved this composition way more, and then I started um, rendering, and then I added color again. Now, this time, I took the coloring into Photoshop. I know I said I don't really use it much anymore, but um, I didn't realize at the time that Clip Studio also has this. I use gradient maps. Now, Photoshop has a lot more gradient map options than Clip Studio does, and I have downloaded a fair amount. I like using gradient maps to place my colors because of how evenly it does it. And then, so I'll do a gradient map, and then I can usually set it to mode. I usually kind of go for hard light, overlay, soft light, just mess with it, Look, see what looks good, layer it, take things away, put things back, use those gradient maps. I know I wanted some kind of contrast to help make the character stay out, the bottom half was going to be orange, the top half was going to be blue, because as we know those are complementary colors, so it creates a lot of interest in the image itself. So I chose the colors and I started rendering on the colors. Once again, I kind of dropped the ball a little bit. Maybe in the grayscale stage, I really should have 
um, worked out some details like scales um, placement and figuring out where that was going to go and certain other elements but you know it, it is what it is and it didn't turn out too bad I did really enjoy the colors a lot more on this one than the other one the first one I felt was like really dull this one is a bit more pop but I still wasn't too happy with it so what I often do when I'm not happy with colors or how they're turning out is I'll actually go into tonal adjust and I kind of mess around with hue, saturation, brightness. I'll even go into the curves. I gotta be honest with you, I don't know what the curves do. <laughs> I couldn't tell you. Um, I just know when I move this node here, my blues get brighter. When I move this node here, you know, my brights get brighter. So just mess with those. I mean, just mess with all of them. Have fun. If you're scared about ruining a piece, just copy layers. And then it's fine because you just ruin that layer. <laughs> you can start over. But you mess with your scions, you mess with your yellows, you mess with your blues. Try to see like where you want to push your shadows, where you want to push your highlights. Just look through those. They're a lot of fun, and it's honestly pretty easy to use, I would like to say. And it can really help your piece pop. You're going to notice this painting, I do it a lot. Because as I'm painting, my colors get muddied, or like they just become unsaturated, and they're not as interesting anymore. Or I'm like, oh, I'm not really digging where this one's going, and I'll just slide it over and switch it up. You'll see that from the beginning to the end, my paintings never look at all what they start out like. And that's good. It means you changed. You grew as you were painting. You were learning things. You were trying things out. And that's okay. Now, it does really lengthen the process. But I think it makes it more fun. I like, that's like some of my favorite parts is those little adjustments and kind of making it better through color. And color is not a strong point of mine. I, <laughs> it's so funny, for someone who used to be so terrified of saturated colors, now I just can't get enough of them. I love them so much. But then we're going to bring back another poem. You're going to notice me. I'm going to end up kind of like smoothing out the entire body of the dragon. I'm doing an anatomy fix. I'm looking at it. It doesn't look right. It looks too blocky, too like inserted together. And so what I did is I ended up looking up um, dog anatomy, actually. I like to look up racing dogs because usually due to the minimal fat that they have on their body, the muscle groups really show through. And so I was looking at them to kind of get an idea of like how shoulder pieces attach, where the rib cage is going to be, how muscles are going to show through there. But I'm also keeping in mind the iguana um, inspiration I'm having and I'm trying to fit into that as well. The hardest part for this is going to be the scales. Scales are tedious. I know some artists who are able to do scales in a minimalistic, beautiful way. And like, you know, it's scaled, it feels scaled, <laughs> but they're not painting out each individual scale like this loser is. Though in a way, like honestly doing the scales is kind of therapeutic. It's kind of nice. I mean, like it's just repetitive, which is boring for you guys, but it's soothing for me. The only thing is, is I couldn't decide what kind of scales I wanted. Did I want the um, kind of random shaped ones? Did I want plating ones? Did I want teeny tiny little scales? Leathery skin? Where did I want to go with this? Well, the idea I had is I wanted the whole back to be armored, stiff, bulky, like strong. Like this is an animal that's used to getting attacked from above kind of idea but the underside where most of the tendons are and the flexing of the flesh like the scales are then going to have gaps so like freedom of arm movement and stomach movement so I didn't want the scales to be too crammed or too knitted together because then it felt like it wouldn't be able to move all right so I went for more separated plates so it still had the armored plating but there's gaps now and I went for the leathery skin where it's a whole bunch of tiny little scales rather than big scales making up most of the body. So that was fun. I tested out a couple brushes to see if there was a way I could make it faster. There's not. No, they don't look that good. That's the one thing about Clip Studio is there's some of their texture brushes that are like, eh. But like I said, Clip Studio has a lot of resources and assets from other artists where they have made brushes. But there's like a conundrum on that. Some people like me find two brushes they like and that's all they use and that's fine totally use two brushes go for it if you find ones you like and they look good go for it I know other artists who will use like 20 different brushes and they all have different effects and different looks that's fine too so if you like to use a lot of brushes do and don't worry if you're doing a, like a piece for you don't worry about wasting time trying out brushes I think that's half the fun whenever I get a new art program the first thing I do is I go through all the brushes and I try them out because it's fun 
like on Procreate, I love a lot of their brushes. I have to, I still go through and I'll like check out different ones to see what they look like and how they work. I think that's part of the, the joys of having an art program like that. I don't get to do that with my traditional art because I'm so terrified of wasting traditional media because it's so expensive for me that <laughs> I don't want to use it unless I know for sure I'm going to do a piece. But digital art is freeing for that because like you can use it as much as you want. It's never going to run out. You're never going to buy more. Like It's done. You have everything you ever needed. So just have fun. Like I said, I didn't find anything to help me with scales, but that was fine. I just painted them individually, found ways I liked it, kind of messed with colors a little bit. The thing, too, is that it became very two-tone. I was trying to get some more colors in there so it wasn't just straight blue and orange. I tried to get a little bit of purple in there as well as some pinks. Really have fun with it. And when I have a good chunk of the dragon done, pretty much all done almost, I start looking at the background. I need to really start thinking about this background because if you can't get characters to feel like they fit into the same background, then what's the point? So what I did, and I do this a lot, is I um I took the layer that I was working on, I duplicated it, and I started painting over everything. I wasn't caring about the dragon or the bell knight. I was just painting the background because what I'm going to end up doing is going back and masking out the areas that the dragon and the bell knight are in. So the background doesn't touch it. But this way, like I've done before with the grayscale, I don't have to worry about accidentally painting over main elements of my painting. I can be as free as I want, really kind of work with the background, get a feel for the landscape. And once again, you know, the dragon's going to be covering a lot of that work, and that's okay with me. I don't mind putting in that work to really make sure that the background works and it makes sense. Because sometimes you look at a background, it can look disjointed. And you don't, you want the focus to be on the characters, and the background actually really helps with that. It can help bring that focus into the characters if done correctly. The idea I had was the dragon coming out of the forest, you know, kind of like drool dripping, bleh, setting fire on things. The trees are all charred, and it's awful. Like it's a fiery pity hell, and it's walking in towards the bell knight who's in the parts of the forest that aren't damaged. He's come to greet the dragon head on in battle to save the forest. And I wanted it to where the trees led up your eye along the body of the dragon and then pointed down towards the bell knight to really bring the focus in on the bell knight because he's so small compared to the dragon. And um, I'm saying he, I would like to point out <laughs> that um, Bell Knights do not have genders. I'm just saying he to not confuse you because I'm referring to the dragon as an it. The Bell Knight referring to a he or the they. So they're standing there. They're ready to take on the dragon. You know, like a, I want a nice powerful pose with a big weapon. I want them kind of relaxed and chilled back. I want that to be copied in the background. This, this pointing of like this is the Bell Knight but keeping the area where the head is free of any clutter so it doesn't blend in too much. The bell lights are very simple in body design and head design, so if you get too much going on behind them, it can cause an issue to where now you can't pick out the silhouette of the bell light, it doesn't stick out as much. So I really had to make sure I was doing that. I ended up redoing the right side. I didn't like how the colors were working at all. Like I was thinking, okay, the blue's not working. It's not looking good. I'm like, what if I did green? Because green's the color of life. Maybe it's a, a live forest and everything. It still didn't work. This is when I started doing some research into burning forests to see what the color schemes are, to see how they look. I should have done this in the first place, but I am the queen of, um, oopsies. Should have done that earlier. Should have done that sooner. Learn from your mistakes. My next painting, I learned. You know, I'll do my research beforehand, and it'll be much better, and it'll be good, hopefully. Or I'll make the same mistakes again. I don't know. I don't please myself. I should. <laughs> But I decided that um, a lot of forests have this orange glow from the fire. And even though I would make the background slightly monochromatic, I could add in elements that would make it not so much so. Such as the trees up front, I will make a darker blue color. And then as it, as it recedes into the back, it lightens into the orange and yellow glow of a fire. And this worked out really well. It kept the background from being too distracting with a different color scheme. It helped join the two halves of the piece together so they didn't feel like two separate paintings that were just smashed together in the middle which really worked out and it just made it a more cohesive element so I'm really glad I ended up doing that so like I said don't be scared to start over it's just a painting you can do it later if you're really scared that you're gonna erase everything and hate it 
just save an older version of the work. That's fine too. I sometimes will have six different files of the same image because I'm not sure if I'm going to like the new one or if I want to go back to the old one or copy elements from the old one. As you can see here, I'm working with a lot of layers. I don't normally do this. For my Patreon, I offer um, Photoshop and Clip Studio documents that go into detail of my layers so people can see the process, see how I go from the beginning to the end. So I save every time I do a color correction, I save every time we do a redo together um, for you. But usually I'm only working on one layer and that can be intimidating for people. But I used to do a lot of traditional art paintings in oil paint, so you only have one layer to work on. And it just became a thing that was normal for me. So I'm okay with working on one layer. I'm okay with getting rid of elements completely and just wiping them out. Because remember, you already did that. If you really liked how it looked before, you can paint it again. You'll be fine. So don't worry about erasing it. Don't worry about painting over it. You're an artist. You can just paint it again. So this whole piece, I've been doing the dragon, and I've been doing the background, and I'm finally getting started on the bell knight. And the bell knights, like I said, are simple. They're very simple makeup. The idea is inspired by medieval armor, though they can have any kind of thin, um, theme to their armor, depending on the area that they're from. Uh, but the base one was always based off of a medieval armor, and I thought this dragon seems kind of medieval-esque, so I went with that kind of feeling again this time. So I start putting in the head, I'm looking up textures, how to do textures. Metal textures are hard. You want like nothing too smooth because this is a warrior. They have been in battle. You know, he went kind of scruffed up, a little dented, a little, you know, roughed up. He's a, he's a rough kind of dude thing at Bell Knight. So I looked up that and then I started kind of looking up armor inspiration. Did you ever notice that when you see like armor? like photos of armor or people who do paintings and concept work of armor. No one ever shows the back, probably because that's the boring part. But I had to like fumble a little bit, try to figure out like how would the back pieces connect. Armor is difficult for me, so I bet you're wondering why I created a whole entire character set around armor. I like punishment, masochist, love it. <laughs> um, truthfully, it's because I think armor is awesome. I just can't draw it. So I looked up references of different um, medieval armor sets to see how they connected together. At first he had a giant shoulder pad, but I felt like that was going to conflict with the weapon he was holding. I was trying to take in consideration his weapon, like what kind of armor do you need to make this weapon work? Nothing too flowy, nothing that's going to get caught on the long pole as he's swinging it around. You know, this giant scythe. Um, but I wanted his pose to be confident. I wanted to have this feel of casualness, like he was waiting for this dragon to approach, he knew what he was doing, he was ready to go. And I think I really kind of nailed that kind of pose. I also have in the description all of the references I did end up using for poses. There is a ton out there, a lot of them are free for use, some of them you don't have to buy. I do, like when I have money, I do like to send tips to um, stock artists because let's be honest here they're kind of the backbone of the art community providing the um, reference images we need with different props so if you ever can always tip your stock photo artists um, you know like if they have a coffee or a paypal or whatever or if you can buy one of their um, sheets like you're like hey I do a lot of this kind of work I know I'm going to use a lot of these poses go ahead and buy them um, but I'll link everything down below uh, when it comes to like what references I use and how I search for them for you guys um, I'll probably even put in some timestamps too for this video, just so you're not sitting through the whole entire thing going like, oh my god, I just want to see this one part. Where is it? So I'll do that for you guys as well. But overall in this painting, it ended up coming together a lot better than I thought it would. Um, I'm pretty happy with it. Actually, I'll be offering these as prints on my Redbubble. If you join my Patreon, there um, I want to say it's the $10 tier gets access to the full resolution um, image for personal use. So if you want as a background, splash image, whatever, you can totally use it for that. Um, and I want to say they also get the layered PDFs and Clip Studios so you can see how the work looks um, on my workspace. <laughs> I'm really bad at talking. Anyways, I really do appreciate you guys sticking around for this video. I know it's long, but um, I think it was worth it. And I really enjoyed this piece. I'm looking forward to doing more Bell Knight stuff. I'll be having a poll over on my Patreon on what we're going to do next. And I will let you guys know what they decide. And yeah, I'll see you guys in the next video.
Have a great night or day. I don't care. Just have a good one. Bye.